Hello and welcome to today's video. So today's video is my Sea Goblin and it's my unofficial Ace of Clay collaboration. So what does that mean? Well, I am in a group on Facebook called Snakes of Clay. So this is Ace of Clay's Facebook group. So it has thousands of other artists in it. And last month, so it would be May 2020 if you're watching this way in the future, last month Ace of Clay had a challenge. And what he did is he took a random character generator and generated a character to do for May 2020's challenge. So what the random character generator came up with is gender is male, age is young adult, Personality is relaxed. Weapon slash prop is double-handed axe. Bean is goblin. Appearance is unusual. And key feature is funny hair. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made my sea goblin for Aces of Clay, Snakes of Clay, May 2020 Group Sculpt Challenge. All right, let's get started. One of the first thing I thought about when I was planning for this project is I thought it would be really cool to use two halves of seashells for the two-handed axe. So I got those picked out of my collection of seashells and I actually went out to our backyard and found this twig. So I'm just carving this down with the X-Acto knife. I'm going to put a spiral shell on the bottom of it. So I'm just going to add some glue with my hot glue gun and get that attached and then I thought well I want to cover up that rough edge so I would use this black cord and wrap it around but also that that would make a good handle for the goblin to grip you know we don't want him to get any splinters so I've just got my black cord wrapped around there I'm just adding some glue to hold that in place now I want to add the two seashells for the blade so I'm just using my X-Acto knife to split the twig so I can kind of wedge these seashells in there. But I want to dig that out a bit so they're, it's not so tight and then I can glue them in place. So I'm just carving out some of the twig, just giving me a nice spot to center them. And I kind of raised it up in the middle where the seashells raise up so it would nestle in there and be a little more secure. And once I was happy with how that was, I went ahead and hot glued both seashells in to make the two blades for my two-handed axe. And then I wanted to go ahead and add some cord to kind of look like this is how he built it. He, he wouldn't have used a hot glue gun. He would have, you know, used some kind of cord to hold these seashells in place. So I'm adding the cord and just a little bit of hot glue on the back there so it won't be as noticeable. And then I thought it needed something on the top. And so I had a couple small shells. I kind of want to do a spike one, but it didn't look like it wasn't going to fit on there. So I used this other smaller seashell and just stuck that on there. Now with the axe done, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the goblin. So I'm using Super Sculpey and I'm just softening up a block of that and adding some Primo Green because I want to have my goblin to have a green tint to his skin. So I've got that all blended together. And then I'm going to take some wire and make an armature. So our little friend here to the left there is my Mythic Legion's Ogre. I thought it would work really well to make the goblin about the same size as him, even though this is an ogre and I'm doing a goblin, which is going to be a smaller creature. He's not in scale. But what this did was allow me to mark off where, you know, his knees and his elbows and all his proportions are. Now that I have my two halves made, I'm just taking some craft wire and wrapping around there to secure those. And then I'm just going to go through and make a few adjustments. I want to make sure everything looks okay. You could take a ruler to match up your sections to make sure they're the same length to keep him somewhat symmetrical. And now that I'm happy with that, I'm just taking some more of my thicker wire, bending it over and making a spot for his neck. So I just stuck this in between where that craft wire was and my two pieces of thicker wire and just secured it in there. 
Just gonna add some craft wire around that a little bit to give it a little more, make it a little more secure. So I just brought up my axe to kind of see if that would look good with this size and I was pretty happy with it. So now I'm going to bulk up my wire armature with some foil. I just used the Rental Dry Apps sheets. Those work really well for building up. So now that I'm happy with the basics of my armature, I'm going to take some uncolored Super Sculpey to bulk this up. So the reason why I'm doing that is because it, you know, it takes a lot of effort to mix that green in there and there's no need for me to do that all the way through. But I did want to bulk this up some, at least in the chest area and the legs, and get him some shape to his feet to give him some stability. So I'm just shaving it down, getting it just right, adjusting the different sizes, make sure everything looks proportionate. And then once I'm happy with that, I can bake him according to package instructions. Now once he's cooled, I can go ahead and kind of match him up with my ogre. I went ahead and added where his wrists would be. And I'll start adding the colored clay. So the reason why I did the legs and the upper body like this and not the arms is because the arms are going to be thinner. So I don't need to bulk those up as much. So I'm going to start with his feet and just work my way up. So you can see I'm using my ruler again because I want to make sure they're not too much different. The, his left look, looked a little bit bigger. So I just wanted to make sure they weren't too far off. I'm not worried if they're perfect, but you don't want it, you know, one to look like it's way bigger than the other. So as I build these up, I'm just taking my ball tool and adding some detail because this will be the final layer on our goblin. Now I'm just taking more of the green Primo mixture and covering his legs. So I will go ahead and get his complete lower half all covered with the green Sculpey mixture. I'll just go through, thin out pieces and add it until I am completely done with that. Now I want to add some details to him. So I'm going to start by bulking up and adding some of his muscles. Just getting to make sure the shapes are right. Go through with my silicone tool and my ball tool and add some details. I want this guy to be fairly muscular. So I was using that ogre as a reference. And so I want his skin to be, you know, tight over his muscles. So I went ahead and rolled out some little sections of clay to make his knees. Want those to kind of show more be more prominent and now I'm just smoothing in with my finger adding some details with my ball tool lots of lines and details with this guy so I'm just gonna keep going over bulking up where it needs it using my ball tool to do the details smooth everything out I want it to look like it's just all one piece he's not an action figure like my ogre so I don't want any seam lines now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and roll out four little balls I'm going to use for his ankles. So I'm just going to add those in, smooth them in with my ball tool to give him that definition of his ankle bone there. So I'm doing that on each side, going through, smoothing everything. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some more little details of where I thought he needed some adjustments. Kind of look at the legs and see how they compare to each other. Now I'm going to add his toesies. So I decided to do four toes on each foot. So I'm basically working my way from the middle out. So I'll start with the big toes and then just do each toe after that. And I try to do them about the same size so he stays somewhat symmetrical. So these are basically like little marshmallow shapes. I'm going to take my ball tool, smooth them in so they're attached. I'm going to flip him over and do the same thing on the bottom so I can get those smoothed in so they'll be nice and sturdy. So I'm not worried about any other feet details on the bottom, but I do want to make sure those toes stay on. Now I'm just going to round them out a little bit, add some detail with my ball tool and my silicone tool make sure they look good and now i'm just using my small ball tool to add indentions for the toenails 
I'm gonna give him some black toenails and make them nice and sharp, like little pointed ones. Not necessarily claws, but claw-like. Add a few more details with my needle tool and my small ball tool to go over everything. Make sure everything looks up to standard for my goblin. Is that, is that the right saying, up to standard? So, so, so I'm happy with it. So I'm gonna go through, touch that up. Now I'm gonna take my black Primo Sculpey. I'm gonna roll out, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start with some bigger ones, go smaller and smaller and smaller. So once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna start rolling these out and attaching them. So I just roll them out, flatten them a little bit and bring them to a point. These I'm not as worried about being the exact same size since toenails and fingernails often vary. But I do want them to make them look like, you know, they're not, I don't want them to stand out as being out of place. So once I get all those attached, put my black clay away and now I'm going to go ahead and bake them again according to package instructions. And once he's cooled, we can start working on the top of him. Now, since I baked my lower part, you know, the whole point of that is so I don't mess up my sculpture. So I'm adding my clay to my upper body and I lost a couple of toenails. So you saw the one shoot out and there it is, but I'm missing the other one. So we'll do a little replay, just see one. And obviously my hands are kind of blocking the camera a bit but I could not find that second toenail. So you see here, I lost the two outside ones on his right foot. I'm even like looking to see if it's underneath the clay. Nope, nope, just that one, yep. And yeah, it's still just one. So I just set that aside, I'll reattach that, make a new one later for the uh, one that's missing. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish bulking up the upper body with the green clay. Now I'm gonna beef up his chest a bit you know this guy's carrying a two-handed axe he's got some muscle as far as his the goblins go so i'm gonna give him some pecs build that up some take my ball tool and give him some nice shape and i'm using my ogre model as a reference off camera he's got a very tight chest lots of details so i'm doing the same thing with this guy now his stomach, I was going to give him like a six pack, but it didn't look right. So I thought I'll just come back to that and worry about that later. So I decided because he's hunched over, I thought I should have his shoulder blade showing. You know, he's a skinny goblin. I thought that would look natural on him. So I did do a lot of Google searches since my ogre didn't have the shoulder blades showing. And... I found it's more visible in women, so his back is actually modeled after a woman, at least his shoulder blades are, but we don't need to let her know that she was a model for a goblin. I'm sure that would, you know, upset her. The other thing I wanted to do, and this I just kind of came up with on my own, is I wanted his spine to kind of show through more. So I did a bunch of indentions, and then I wanted to go ahead and add a lot of detailing around it, you know, everything, adding that texture, adding lots of lines, smoothing everything in, make it all, you know, look as natural as possible as our little fantasy goblin can look. So once I was happy with the details on that, I'm going to go ahead and touch up some more details on his tummy. I was really trying to get this six pack to work and it just, it just wasn't happening. So I kind of left that and rolled out a snake of clay, cut off a bunch of little sections that I was going to use for the bumps in his spine. Initially my clay was a little bit too small in my section so I kind of doubled it up and then I just added these little spikes and so basically I rolled the balls in there and I kind of pinched them as I pulled my fingers away to give them a little bit of a point. I thought that would look really good on a goblin character. So once that was done, I went ahead and started adding some more detail work on the front. So I wanted to make his chest more detailed, his upper chest and his neck area. So I added a couple snakes of clay there and smoothed that in with my small ball tool and my silicone tip tool. Get that looking good. Added some more indentions and more texture to him. I love doing texture on characters, so this was a lot of fun. And then once I was happy with that, I went ahead and 
smooth out his stomach some. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, since he's hunched over, he's not going to have that six pack and it's going to look more wrinkled. So once I was done with that, I wanted to add a couple of snakes of clay to his neck to kind of get that V shape up there. And then I smooth those in. So he's a very tight, muscular neck for our little goblin. Keep going over that with the ball tool, smoothing in pieces, adding details, lines, all that goodness. So I'm just going to keep going over everything. Now I want to position the arms to hold the double-bladed two-handed axe. And make sure I want to bring it in close to his body so both his hands can be in that handle area. Now what I'm doing is rolling out some thicker snakes of clay. And I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife to cut it down the middle and wrap it around my wire and then taking my ball tool and silicone tip tool to smooth it in and add it to the arms. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the upper portion of the arms and do the forearms. So I did that on both of those the same way. But looking at this, I know I wanted him to have thin arms, but this goblin could not lift a two-handed ax. I mean, he's way too scrawny arms. We need to give him some muscles. So first I'm gonna start off with section of clay added to his bicep area to give him some nice tight biceps but then i thought well i need to bulk him up a little bit in the back of his arm give him a little bit of a tricep there too so i'm going to do that on both the arms and we'll just go through and keep smoothing those pieces in adding more clay until i'm happy with the arms i built up the forearm some lots of line detail so now that i'm happy with where he's at I'm gonna go ahead and make some teeth and make his eye so I'm starting off with the eye with a mixture of translucent and white clay and then I'm gonna make his teeth and I wasn't for sure if I wanted to do some fangs on him or just a two regular you know flat tooth so I made both I made two fangs and one flat tooth and that way I would have some options when I go to make the face and see what I think will work then on the eyeball, I thought it'd be nice to have a blue, blue pupil, or blue iris, and a black pupil. So I know my anatomy. But when I was doing this, I wasn't really happy with how it looked. So I thought, well, maybe if I take the blue and swirl that with the white and translucent, give it kind of a swirly marbled effect. So I had a little bit more blue, and I swirled it in there until I was really happy with the marbling effect of this eye and then I reshaped it into his eyeball shape and then I went ahead and made a little indention and I added a black pupil. You'll notice I am just doing one eye. My goblin is not going to be a cyclops but he is going to be a one-eyed goblin. So I did take some liquid translucent clay and put that on his one toe that was that I still had the toenail and then I sculpted a new toenail for his other one. Now I'm going to go ahead and bake everything again according to package instructions. Now I get to make the goblin's head. So I'm just using some more foil to build up. I wanted to get it proportioned right so it looked good for my goblin. And the main thing I'm thinking here is, you know, if you want a creature to look smaller, at least a humanoid one, you do a bigger head on it. So even though he's, you know, I don't have anything in scale with him, by making him with a bigger head in scale with his body or in proportion with his body, I think it comes across that he's a smaller creature. So I went ahead and covered my foil ball with my green clay. And then I did mark the front with the eye sockets. And you'll notice I had an opening in the back there. That's where his hair is going to go. So on his right eye, I went ahead and put that eye I sculpted in the last step. And then for his left eye, I went ahead and had that closed and I did a scar over it like he lost that eye. So my plan is to do a patch, but I went ahead and sculpted that area just in case the patch didn't work out. So now I'm adding some eyelids to his right eye. I'm just taking little sections of clay and wrapping it around there, smoothing it into place to make, make it look like it's all one piece again. So now I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and make the goblin nose. So I just rolled out some clay, added it, smoothed it in with a ball tool. 
Now I'm going to add his nostrils. So what I'm going to do is take two pieces of clay, roll them out to about the same size, attach them on his nose, and do the same thing, smooth it in with the ball tool. Also, I'm going to use my ball tool to add some nostrils. So now I'm just touching up, adding some details, and I'm going to make his jaw. So I'm going to give him an underbite. So I want to make sure everything kind of fits on the head. And I did add the fangs, but they blocked the eyes too much, so I decided to use that more flat, squared off tooth. Now with everything done there, I'm adding some more details, added some lines on the lips. Going through with my ball tool, just adding all the little details that I want in his skin. So the next thing I want to do is make my goblin's ears. So I just made kind of a diamond shape, cut that in half, and start attaching the ears and adding the details. Going through, adding some texture to his skin. I'll do the same thing for the other ear. And then I'll just kind of shape them, touch up all the details, make sure I'm totally happy with how this guy looks. And then I just pr placed it on the body added more details, and then I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. So I'm gonna go ahead and bake that according to package instructions. But I did bake the head separately because I didn't want it falling off in the oven. So now I'm gonna cut out some of that foil. And what I'm doing here is I wanna have an area so I can nestle in my wool roving for his hair and make it look like it's coming out of his head. I don't wanna take it all out because I don't want to weaken my head. I want it to still be sturdy. I'm just adding some super glue gel and holding it in place. Now obviously this, obviously this video sped up quite a bit so I did hold it for quite a while to make sure it was secure. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to take some black warbler. So this piece is definitely a very heavy mixed media piece. So with the black warbler, I'm going to make his gloves. And the reason why I chose to do the black warbler instead of clay is I wouldn't be able to bake my two-handed axe. And so I thought, well, if I made the gloves out of warbler, I could shape his fingers around it after I get the hands made. So I've got the two bases of the hands, the palms done. Now I'm going to go ahead and make his thumbs. So I'm going to do that for each hand. I want to make sure they're a somewhat proportionate, proportional, symmetrical, all those good things. And then I'm just smoothing it in with my ball tool like I did with my clay. Now I'm going to go ahead and make my fingers. So he's going to match up with his toes, so he's going to have a thumb and three fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and make all six of these fingers here. And I'm going to go ahead and attach them to my hand. When I did this, I thought this looks way too long. So I'm going to trim these down and get them more to the proportion that I want them to be. So once I have this done, I'm going to go ahead and heat up the palms and the fingers and attach them. And then I'm going to bring them in so he doesn't have quite a wide grip. I want it to be a little bit tighter because that's how he would hold his two-handed axe. Then I'm just using my X-Acto knife base to get the shape. Then I want to make sure that they slide on. There is that wire there is what I'm attaching them to. It's hard to see with that big goblin head in the way. And now I'm just using my needle tool to add little indentions to make it, you know, I want it to bend like a hand, not like, like a snake. So I'm adding those little indentions, little creases, so that's where it'll bend when he goes to grip the axe. So now it seems, you know, I'm pretty happy with how this is going to fit. The axe is going to fit in his hands. So now I'm going to start getting these heated up and placed onto the arms. This was definitely the hardest process because I didn't want these hands to look too out of place. So I did use some wires to kind of make some indentions to make it so I could slide those on. But then once I got those in place, I was able to put the axe in and heat up the fingers and wrap that axe around, or wrap the fingers around the handle of the axe. And this way I don't have to bring this guy back into the oven because like I said, I know that axe would not survive with all the cord and the hot glue and everything on it. So the other option would be to bake, you know, like the hands, the fingers and the thumb separate, then I'd have to glue them into place and then I'd have that seam line. So I just thought this would be 
a good alternative. Now, one way I thought of, you know, making it so the Warbler didn't stand out so much on his gloves is to do his eye patch out of the same material. So whether it's like a black leather or some kind of black animal skin for the goblin, you know, he would have multiple things made out of that material. So his eye patch, I took two sheets of, you know, it's two thicknesses, two sheets of Warbler for it. And then I wanted it to be attached with these pins or to make it look like it was attached with it, you know, and, and they're supposed to represent like they're nailed. Like this patch doesn't come off. It's nailed on this little goblin's face. So I thought having those pin heads on there to make it look like nail heads would work out perfectly. So I've got that heated up and put on there. And I'm just heating up, touching up some of the glove detail, making sure it's got, you know, nice little marks in there. I didn't want it to look too smooth or too perfect. It would have lots of creases and stuff. Now, the next thing I want to do is add a brown wash to my goblin. So I have lots of water, just add a little bit of paint, and I'm just taking my paintbrush and covering my entire goblin with this brown wash. I don't want him to necessarily look dirty, but I don't want him to look too clean either. You know, I want him to be somewhere in between. I want some darkness to some of his crevices and just add a little bit of more depth to him. So once I was finished with that, I'm going to go ahead and let him dry overnight because he's really wet. Now we'll come back to him and I'm going to take my Sculpey Gloss and I'm going to gloss his eyeball. So I've just got a small paintbrush here. I'm going to gloss his eyeball. Get that all nice and covered. I'm going to gloss his tooth. Make sure that's nice and shiny and then put some gloss in his mouth and make that look wet. And then I'm going to gloss his toenails because he, he takes good care of his toenails. He's proud of these. These are some pretty goblin toenails. So he's getting those all done up. Once I'm happy with those, the last thing I want to do is add a little bit of moisture under those no nostrils. The next thing I'm going to do is finish up my goblin's outfit. So I need my hot glue gun for this. It's actually my wife's hot glue gun. And this seashell. So I had actually shown my wife this seashell as far as doing it as shoulder armor and she thought it looked good and it kind of adds to the piece. So I took my cord, went around at an angle, trim that off and then I'm just going to take my hot glue gun and add just a little bit of glue there to hold that cord in place and then I'll add some more glue and attach our shoulder armor shell. And I thought, you know, that cord's going to show how he would be holding his armor in place. Now what I have here is some fur I got at a garage sale. This is faux fur. It's, I think, made to put around the top of a boot. But I thought this would look really good to make some little, little trunks for our goblin, some little shorts, or his little, little cloth, you know, to, to cover his, his goblin stuff. So I went ahead and trimmed off two triangles. Got that placed to make sure it looked, you know, about the right size for giving some coverage. Then I just added some glue to that. Just stuck that on there. I'm going to do the same thing in the front. So I'm going to trim that down a little bit so it fits in there and doesn't bunch up too much. Don't want them to be uncomfortable. Heat it, or add some glue to the top of that. Squeeze that in there. But here's the thing, just like the shoulder pad, you know, it needs to have a look of how, how it would actually attach to him. So I took my cord and wrapped it around, and then I glued it in a couple of different spots. But I have those spots of glue that kind of show a little more than his other. So I thought, well, why don't I take some little shells and glue those in place to cover it up, and like he's got these shells on his belt. So I added some more glue, attached both of those, trimmed up his little trunks a little bit, and his shoulder pad, shoulder armor fell off, so I just re-glued that, no big deal. Just going through, adjusting everything, making sure he looks all pretty. So now, I want to add an earring. So I just took some of this kind of gold-toned wire, bent it around into a hoop shape. I did add a hole in there, I don't know if I mentioned that when I was doing the ear, but I did add a hole with my needle tool. So I was able to add that earring. Now my long journey of creating this goblin is almost over. So the next thing I need to do is, next and final thing I need to do is make him some funny hair. So I thought having a purple mohawk would be the perfect thing for my goblin. 
So I took some wool roving, got it about the size and shape that I want it to be, made sure it would fit in there. But before I actually attach it, I'm going to go ahead and take my needle felting needles, got a little foam pad to protect my work surface and my needles, and I would just go through that and make that base a little more dense by going over it with the needles, and that way it'll adhere to the glue a lot better and stay in place. So I added some hot glue in that opening, stuck my wool in there, and then I just took this little piece of wire and kind of pushed it around the edges to make sure it wasn't sticking out. And here is my finished Sea Goblin Sculpt for the May 2020 Group Sculpt for the Snakes of Clay Challenge by Ace of Clay. So I'm really, really happy with this piece. I usually don't do pieces this big. He's definitely, you know, he's tall. He's to that top of his ear, it's about nine and a quarter inches tall. So he goes well past a foot tall with his mohawk. So he's definitely a much larger piece than what I normally do out of clay. I had a lot of fun doing him as a mixed media piece with doing, you know, his seashells and the cord and the twig and the warbla. I mean, just so many different things went into this. And so how did I do representing what the random generator created? So the gender is male. I think he definitely looks male. Age is young adult. Well, he doesn't look old. He's got colorful hair. And I think, you know, polished nails for a goblin, that's definitely a, a young adult, you know, trait. Personality is relaxed. Well... That could kind of go different ways, but one of the things about being relaxed is being creative. And being a sea goblin that made his own two-handed axe out of seashells, I think that's definitely creative. Weapon or prop is double-handed axe, so yes, I did that out of seashells. He's a goblin, so I got that. Appearance is unusual, so I made him a sea goblin or a pirate-type goblin, so that's a little more unusual than a standard goblin. And key feature is funny hair, so I think for a goblin with a purple mohawk, that qualifies. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had a lot of fun making this guy. He was definitely a very challenging piece, but well, well worth the effort. I am definitely looking forward to the next challenge. So whatever he comes up with for June, I will create that, and it'll be my first video in July. The only thing I didn't do was give this goblin a name, so if you have an idea of what my goblin should be called, please leave it in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please give it a like, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel, it really helps my channel grow. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, never stop creating. Bye!